Welcome to the Uriah Jokes Podcast. The podcast where me, Uriah, jokes. And then someone down below comments that I'm a sociopath because I keep doing the same thing expecting the same results. Well, guess what? I don't keep doing the same thing every day because every day is a different day. And you can't do the same thing every day if the previous day isn't the same thing as the next day. So it looks like, comment down below, Clone Trooper. Looks like you're the real Clone Trooper. And speaking of being a Clone Trooper, Uriah Westman. Hey, fantastic. This is Uriah Jokes Podcast. And guess what? Last podcast was 20 minutes long and I didn't get to any sort of jokes that I wrote, so I got jokes here. And then we're going to dive into a stand-up comedy story from yesterday. And I'm going to keep talking this fast because I'm on the caffeine train population number one. Fantastic. So uh, when I get new relationships, uh, they always want to meet my family. And they can't meet my family because they're in Canada and they're anti-vaxxers. And they can't get over here because of the vaccine passport. Which is kind of awesome because I could be like, hey, dad, want to come for Easter? Oh, you can't make it? Oh, want to come out to the hockey game? Want to come on down to my GED test? My birthday? Oh, you can't make it all, but I've been inviting you for all these things. Worst thing I would want is that my dad to come to his senses to get vaccinated. Then he'll be here for Christmas. I'm like, no, get the hell out of here. So they want to see, hey, at least let me see a family photo. And most family photos, matching sweaters, you know, happy together. Bunch of socialists, if you ask me. But my family photo would look like a police lying up because it would be under a court order. You know, for all of us to get together. It's the only reason why we would all be together. If we got tricked. And don't most families start with being tricked? Uh, I, I think that was a question at this point. Hey. So here's 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 a fun little joke here. So so I had this theory. So right now, because of the internet, all these morons can communicate with each other. I can communicate with other people too and have a platform for my podcast and my ideological ideas. So what I kind of thought is that if all these people, if the internet was invented first before like the fence or something it would be like hey you know guys the the sheep the sheep keep getting out and then the wolves are eating them so I built a fence right and now the sheep aren't gonna get out and then everyone would be like he's a hero he's a hero he saved us and then there'd be that guy with the conspiracy group being like you're just trying to fence us in and we're the sheep now how do we know that you're not gonna become the fence and we're gonna become the sheep down with the fence down with the fence and then before you know it everything would collapse the internet is an amazing place except most of the time it's not well that's a Probably need to work that joke out a little bit, but it has legs. Or maybe you're on the fence about it. <laughs> my boss came up to me. I have a lot of jokes that say my boss came up to me. And a lot of the times, the, my boss doesn't come up to me or my friend is. These people don't exist. They exist for the setup of a punchline. Uh, much like a cop will make something up to set up someone for a crime. I, I, I don't... I think that happened. I don't, I don't know. But he's like, Uriah, it's my way or the highway. So I was like, it's actually uh, no rush hour right now, and it's uh, 8 p.m., so I guess it's going to be my way. It could be your way from 3 to 6 p.m. during rush hour, and don't you rush to conclusions about firing me for that, or you will have to hear from my lawyer, my labor lawyer, who goes by an hourly rate. And he will definitely be able to rush on over here because you're violating my charter. And he's definitely going to rush on over here because he is a rush, Russian to judgment. So I got this. I want to learn how to surf. So I got this guy to teach me how to surf. And now I won't get off my couch. He's a, he's a couch surfer. <laughs> I just gotta, here we go, last joke here. And this could be a shorter podcast. I'm gonna do my other. So I said, hey, Uriah, you're gonna tell a story about stand up comedy? Yes, I am. 
at the end. So my, my, uh, I got in a car accident the other day. I, uh, I was listening to Shaggy, It Wasn't Me, which, if you get in a car accident while listening to Shaggy, It Wasn't Me, saying, like, it's a Mr. Boombastic, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, is not a defense that you can use in the court of law, which I'm finding out the hard way. Order, order. I'm out of order at that one, and this joke is out of order. So, I got in a car accident, and of course I'm like, Is everyone okay? It wasn't me! Well, clearly it was me. I was the one who backed up into him. Backed up into them, because baby, I got back. I got got back problems. I was like, oh, I should have been like, oh, my back, my back! But I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have my coffee yet, and I can't think until I've had my coffee which probably means I shouldn't be driving a motor vehicle because then I get a motor vehicle accident so I of course call the police get the report all that jazz oh the paperwork oh the paperwork you know some people are scared of the badge and the gun I'm scared of the paperwork because paperwork doesn't have little red lines it doesn't have real little red lines telling me when I'm misspelling a word. So I have to go with my own thoughts and confidence. And my handwriting is awful. It's a miracle that I can read and write. So I called up my insurance company. And then they got mad that I called the police. I shouldn't have got progressive insurance. <laughs> and I have several stand-up comedy stories. Uh, that are varying degrees of interesting... Uh, one, one guy uh, commented, he's, he's been uh, watching my stuff and commenting for over a year almost, close to a year, so thank you very much. And he's like, Uriah, why do you have an Oxford Dictionary? Well, I actually, uh, not only when I smoke weed, but when I'm just kind of relaxing, I'll open up the dictionary. And this is true, I'll, and I'll just glance through it. And I, I read words, I read the description of words, and I, I hope to find something, and sometimes... Uh, out enough, I think about a joke, and, and so one of these jokes was, I'm not really in the laissez-faire, so I don't play golf. And in order to understand that joke, you need to know what laissez-faire is, which I actually forget, and I don't have my dictionary around here. So I went to this mic way at 11 p.m., and it was it wasn't bad. It, it wasn't bad in the sense where it's a newer club. It's called the Comedy Chateau. And had lots of comedians that haven't been doing it for that long. And as much as it's annoying to hear comedians who just started, it's nice because they still have that little glimmer of hope, that of happiness before they realize that they could be doing this for five years and still be at the same place. So I get up, I do my jokes, and I have this bird joke, which I... Uh, I'm not going to do for you guys, but it's a hilarious joke about left and right wing and a bird. It's fantastic. It adds a couple tags. I'm turning into a big, solid bit to think about how many bird puns and how many bird stuff I could do in, in one little bit, which will be very exciting. So I say the joke uh, and a tag to it, and then the, one other guy, he starts laughing. And he it has like a diabolical laugh. I'll play the clip at the end. And it just goes and goes. And eventually I'm just like, I, I have to stop and let just, because his laugh is making other people laugh. And that's like one thing is like, I don't need to move to a new joke. The laughter is what matters. And anticipating the fact that people may be laughing at a joke longer, it's like, okay, what can I then do? Can I do an act out? Can I do something else with my face, facial expressions to add on to the laughter while people can continue to laugh at the previous joke? So I think that's really cool. And eventually I'm like, man, I'm doing this open mic to try to live my dream as a comedian. But as I go home and go to sleep, that laughter right now is going to lead to the nightmares of my soul. And then I got more laughs. And that was like a cool thing because I thought about that off the cuff where I kind of thrive. I thrive on having my jokes, but then I thrive on being able to throw in extra things that I just think about off the cuff. Which is very nice because a lot of comedians have said it, there's the essence of being funny. And then once you can get your material and who you are to kind of collide. And then before you know it's who you are on stage rather than the material to 
which goes into what Bill Hicks once said, the material is what you fall back on. It's me as the essence of a person is funny, and you might be like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's not funny. I don't care what you have to think. I don't care. If I cared, I wouldn't be doing open mics after five years of comedy, guys. Come on. Stop wasting your time. We have a finite amount of time on Earth, and you're wasting it spending your time complaining about me. I'm okay. I hit my funny bone, but if you ask me, I hit my funny bone every day. And this has been the Uriah Jokes Podcast. New episodes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, four days a week. That's four times Uriah, and that's four times a week. That sounded uh, sinister towards the end. Hey, it's four times a week. You better listen. And you better hit that like and subscribe button. <laughs>